Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials. Today is episode 2 in the Intermediate Programming Language Tutorial Series. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we are going to be teaching you how to work with multiple classes in your program. Uh, this is just one way of doing it. It's a, uh, it's a means of protecting all of the information that you don't want the user to touch after they've entered or if you don't want the user to, to go into the source code itself and manipulate it while the program is running, this is the way you would do it. It's called method encapsulation. You usually do the encapsulation of the methods in another class. So, aside from that, we're just going to go ahead and go over multiple classes. This is all set up for forms, which we will be getting into in the next two tutorials. So you've got one more after this, and then we're getting into classes. This is a bit of a long one because we have to write two whole files of Java, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import java.util.scanner. Now you could do the dot asterisk if you wanted, but that's going to load everything inside the util file and make it ready to be uh, available for the program. And all we need today is scanners, so that's all we're going to import. I'm going to do public class temp conversion. Like I said, we are going to be doing a temperature converter, so we are going to have it set up so it does Celsius to Fahrenheit and the other way around as well. Uh, in this class, uh, notice how we have a class here, in this class we are going to be only putting one method, that is going to be the public static void main string two blocks args. There we go. So this is all pretty routine stuff. Inside here we're going to declare a couple variables. Double, we're going to do one called intemp. That's the temperature that our uh, users are going to enter. We can do 0.0, .0 for that. And we also need another double called out temp. And that's the converted temperature that we're going to be returning to the users. Excuse me. I'm going to do int scale. Set that equal to zero. And that's going to be the only int we have. The scale is going to determine uh, from where we're starting, whether it's going to be Fahrenheit or Celsius. So and we're going to create our scanner. Generic stuff equals new scanner system dot n. This shouldn't be anything new for you. Oops, I forgot my colon or my semicolon. Whatever it is. And then here's the tricky part. We're going to go ahead and create an instance of the class that we're going to be creating after this. And that's going to be called Calculate. So you're going to do capital C, just like you're calling out the name. Actually, let me go ahead and create the other class right now so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go Public Class Calculate. And we're just going to declare it just like any other one. We can go ahead and save this off for now. We're going to come back to it. So we've created our class called Calculate. That will prevent us from getting errors when we pull this in. And let's just call it Calc equals New Calculate. And then go ahead and put parentheses right there because we are calling a uh, class. So go ahead and put the parentheses and you're all done. This is how you create an instance of a class. I believe I went over that either in the very end of the Java to beginner tutorials or at, at the very end of the C-sharp tutorials. Either way, that's how you create an instance of the class. It's just basically making an object that contains everything that's inside this class right here, cl class calculate. Um, and like I said, it's converting into an object so we have readily access to everything that's inside there. So we can call on everything that's inside that class now. Once we're done with that, we need to load up some prompts. So system.out.println, please enter your starting number or temperature, how about? Put a couple dots. Again, I forgot my colon. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and assign this to nTemp. So we want nTemp equals uh, input.next double, and this is a valid class inside the system.in uh, scanner, so you don't need to worry about this guy. Uh, we don't want to any errors with that. And then we need to give them another prompt for the uh, scale, so system.out dot print line please oh. uh, let's go ahead and start with is your starting temperature 
Fahrenheit or Celsius. And I believe I probably spelled Fahrenheit wrong, but whatever, we'll go with it. So put parentheses, one for F, two for C. Easy enough. Close the quotes, close the parentheses, and we're moving on the next line. Assign scale to whatever input dot next int, because remember scale we assigned as an int, because that's all we really need. We don't need um, double precision for this. All right, and then here's the tricky part. We're going to go ahead and call on our object of the class calculate again uh, to assign these variables to some methods, uh, some encapsulated methods that we're doing. We're going to do calc dot set in temp. And this will all make sense once we get to uh, writing the other class in temp. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be creating a class called set in temp. It's an encapsulated method. Uh, so in here we're going to have private in temp. We're going to call that as a double. Private double in temp. Private double out temp. Private int scale. Okay, so we declare these as privates because we don't want the user to have um, immediate direct access to these variables because if so they can go about changing the variables to something we don't want them to be changed to um, without our permission. So we create encapsulated methods of these which just forward whatever is entered to these variables that the user can't see and that way the user has no direct access. Um, I'll explain that a little more in detail here. Jumping back to our temp conversion class, uh, just to finish it off, we're going to do uh, calc.setScale, same thing as, uh, as the uh, set in temp. And then we're going to do one last thing, out temp. We're going to assign whatever is returned from uh, from the calculate class to out temp. So calculate or out temp equals calc dot get out temp. Again, these are all methods that we will be writing here very very shortly. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to set up an if statement to return whatever we are going to write. Scale equals equals one system dot out dot print line your temperature in Fahrenheit is, put a space there, close the quotes, plus out temp, plus, put a period. Close that out. Then we're going to do else, because if it's anything other than one, we want it to return a Celsius value. <clears throat> We're going to go system dot out dot print line your temperature in Celsius is space plus out temp. And again you can copy and paste the Fahrenheit and just change Fahrenheit to Celsius. Save yourself some time, but just because I went ahead and did it without thinking about it. I just did it that way. So we are officially finished with this. We can go ahead and save it off. So we now have our class tempconversion.java and that is 100% complete. So let's go ahead and get working on the calculate class. Um, I've already declared the three variables. We have private double in temp, private double out temp and private in scale. Now we need to do the actual method encapsulation for these. Uh, I believe I went over method encapsulation in my C Sharp tutorials. It's a little bit different in Java, which is why I wanted to go over it again, but it is very handy because like I said earlier, it prevents the users from having direct access to the variables, which could be changed for the worse, especially if it's somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. So we're going to go ahead and start by putting public double set in temp and then assign it a double a u b l e a okay 
And then in here, we're just going to go in temp equals a return in temp. The reason why we do this is because the encapsulated method needs to be the same variable type or return type as the variable itself. So the variable itself is a double. The return type for the method needs to be double, which in turn need, means we need to return a double. So we're not returning it to anywhere in specific. We're just returning the, uh, the value that we plugged in. That way it can be assigned to intemp easily. Next we want to do another set set encapsulation method. So we're going to want to do public int because we're setting the scale now. Set scale int a. And in here it's pretty much the same concept. Scale equals a return scale. That's your basic generic, that's your all around generic uh, set method for Java encapsulation. And then lastly, we want to do a git encapsulation method for out temp. So public double git out temp. And we're not going to be sending anything to the git out temp because it's merely going to be returning a value. Um, I do my encapsulation methods a little bit different from the norm. I usually have it execute the actual calculation methods from inside here. So that's that's one way of doing it or you can just call the methods uh, that calculate all the actual information uh, from your primary method or from your primary class which would be temp conversion but again it's a matter of choice there's a million different ways you can do everything in this language well not everything but there's a few things that you can do completely different from everything else out temp all right so we're setting up an if statement to handle the different uh, possibilities. So if they said Fahrenheit, we're going to go ahead and plug in Fahrenheit. If they said Celsius, we're going to go ahead and plug in Celsius. So equals C convert in temp. So what this is going to do is it's going to push it to a method that we're going to write shortly after this that will convert whatever the value is into Celsius. It will automatically assume that it's in Fahrenheit, or actually it will automatically assume that it's in Celsius to begin with, and it will convert it into Fahrenheit. And just the opposite for the else statement, out temp equals f convert in temp. So, like I said, just the opposite. It'll automatically assume that whatever it is is Celsius, and it'll convert it down to Fahrenheit. Pretty easy stuff. And then just below the if uh, the if statement, we need to do return out temp. That way, whatever it comes out with be, through this if statement, it will re inevitably return uh, to whatever it's calling it. And actually, if you didn't want to, we don't have to put the private double out temp. We can just call it in here and return it since it's not being used anywhere else. But again, it's just a matter of preference. Now that we're done with the method, we need to go ahead and start with our actual calculation methods. Uh, pretty simple stuff. I believe I've gone over them before. We're just going to go private static double C convert double A. Now the reason why we do static here is because some of the, uh, the variables that we're pumping into it are static variables and you cannot process static variables in a non-static method. So we need to go ahead and set it as static so that it can actually process what we're going to be sending it. Create a double, call it C fract for the fraction, and then 5.0 divided by 9.0 A plus equals, oops, not equals, equals, plus equals 40 A times equals C fract and then a minus equals 40, which is the step-by-step uh, -step process for converting a Celsius value to Fahrenheit. So that will come out properly. Return a, of course, because it is a double method, so we need to be returning a double. And then lastly, oh, I put pervit. 
we can just copy the cconvert method, save ourselves some time, paste it, and the only thing we need to do is change it. Whoopsies, that's actually a Fahrenheit convert. I have my fractions mixed up. So we just need to change this guy right here to 9, because when you're converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit, it's 9 fifths. And when you're converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius, it is 5 ninths. So we're pretty much finished here. We should just be able to F5 it, make sure we don't have any errors. I didn't put a T right there. See, we have compilation complete. Push F2. We want to make sure we have temp conversions selected when we push F2 because it can contains the main method. Um, everything else will be assumed because we've created in a, uh, an object out of the other class. So it automatically inherits that. So we can put in our temperature, our starting temperature. We can go 45. So we want 45 degrees Celsius. And you see our temperature in Fahrenheit is 113. I believe if you go to a tried and true uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit converter, you will see that that comes out 100% accurate. So the things to walk away with today are how to create objects of other classes inside your class um, and how to link things together. <clears throat> So you can see we have method encapsulation, which makes it so these variables right here cannot be touched directly by the user. They have to go through these methods to reach them, and these methods only give you this much control over them, so there's not much they can do about it. And even so, they have to go through this process right here to reach those methods. So you can see we're really limiting what the user can do in terms of abusing the program. Um, we're pretty much guiding them as much as humanly possible so that they, we get the, uh, the results that we want and not the results that they accidentally stumble upon. So that's it for today. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, as for next tutorial, we are going to be going over for each loops, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great day.